Have you ever seen a property in this bad condition? Uh, no. Electricals there are buggered. Let's go into the kitchen. Where is the kitchen here? <laughs> wow. I would definitely say we're going to have to completely rewire the whole building. What I like about these distressed buildings is we get to now renovate it the way we want. This window, this is not safety glass window. Otherwise, the building inspector is not going to make it compliant, which means we can't get a sectional title, which means can't get finance. No finance. No finance. Part of my mentorship program is doing a buying experience. This is where I fly down to your area of interest. I meet with you, like my buddy over here, Karisani. We go and do the viewings together and you get a chance to ask me questions and I also help you with the negotiation, with the inspection, with the signing of the OTP. So it's kind of similar to the coaching program. The only difference is that I fly down to your area of interest and work with you on a one-to-one -one basis going through the viewings. And that's what we're here to do today. We're at a, a building of 18 units. Some of the units, don't look as good as the others so we're going to look at the nine units that are in shambles uh Kurisani will ask me a couple questions and then we're going to go to the other side of the building where some of the units have been renovated so it's quite a cool case study um, but the intention of this video is to show you how my mentorship program works if you'd like to know more about my mentorship program click the link below and get in contact with me One of the key things that we want in property, right, is to, is to get a discount. Because mm -hmm. if you're buying equity, you're buying profit from day one. But to, in order to do that, you have to either get a distressed property or a distressed seller. A distressed seller is someone going through a personal problem. A distressed property is what we're going to go and have a look at now. Um, so welcome to, I guess, this half-made property. <laughs> half-made um, is an understatement. <laughs> have you ever seen a property in this bad condition? Uh, no. First time. Okay, so we're going into this room here. This is, I guess, what the bedroom would be. Do you see any major issues? I mean, there's obviously a lot. But there's what's... no electricity here. That's the start. Okay, electricals there are buggered. No electricals, so that's gonna be a massive cost. Does this mean that, would this also pose an opportunity to install like um, water and electricity meters? Yeah. So, I mean, you understand what a meter is used for, right? Yeah, measuring the tenant's um, consumption. consumption. Because usually what happens is your, your tenant will use, and then at the end of the month, you have to try and recover from them, and then it ends up being a fight. And like you said, prepaid meters, they pay, then play. So electricity is a big issue. I would say we're looking at repainting, retiling. This whole unit needs to be completely redone. Just on the electricity, does this place have to be rewired completely because it doesn't look like there's cables coming through anywhere? So that's a great question because um, that's something you can't see until you've knocked open the wall. Stripped over it. Stripped the wall. So what we would do is we'll get an inspector to come in here to do a de detailed analysis and I think we would just budget a conservative figure and assume we have to rewire because you're only going to see the rewiring once you've taken transfer and you started knocking it open. Plus we don't know if it's still okay, even if yeah. it, there was still something left. Exactly. Okay, let's go into the kitchen. Where is the kitchen then? <laughs> it's a great question. I think this is what the kitchen was. This is what it was. Wow. It's hard to actually see what's going on here. So this was the, this is obviously where the sink was. What I like about these distressed buildings is we get to now renovate it the way we want. Mm. So what I would do here is I'd rip out this wood. Wood is terrible in the kitchen because it's just going to get damp Water. and moldy. Put a granite top, concrete, brick, something that's durable, that's going to last. Outside of just sink, tap, yeah. and electrical things, what do you also prefer to add just for your tenants' convenience? Uh, good question. I would say you definitely want to put some cupboard space. Um, again, you know, bricks and, and, and durable kind of stuff. Um, a stove. Depending yeah. on the market, you might put a portable stove or you might put a built-in stove. And, um, and this market that we're currently in, would you put what type of stove would you put? I put probably a portable stove. Portable stove. Yeah. Like a two plate, four plate? Four plates. Yeah. This is crazy. This is what the DB board was. I mean, look at these electricals. This... Yeah, I would definitely say we're going to have to completely rewire the whole building. Okay, so that was the half done kitchen. Now we're going to the half done, lo half -done lounge. Now another issue you would have, another issue that we've, we've, we've realized with this building is this window. This is not safety glass window. Oh. So if we want to be compliant with building regulations, this has to be safety glass window. Because imagine you've got a child running, hits here, falls over and dies. The landlord, we have accountability to that. 
And if we don't have safety glass, we could, you know, be liable. Mm, okay. And then we've got the room. Nice that there's at least built-in cupboards. So we don't have to upfront that cost. But we would not have to make them a bit better than they look. Not necessarily. I think it, it, it depends on the market, right? So this is, we're definitely in the lower income segment. So it's more about durability. And it like just this, has to be... I mean with like maybe just paint or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like repaint. I think this whole unit needs to be repainted, retiled. Uh, windows need to be fixed. What, what would you estimate this unit's renovation to be? This unit only? Mm, this one. It's hard to tell with the fact that you have to rewire. Yeah, you also yeah. don't know the state of the plumbing. I would give it maybe 80 to 100, give or take. That's not a bad guess. We had a, we had a builder come in and for the nine units said one mil. So that works out to about 100, 110 per unit. Okay. So having not really seen much, you, you guessed quite well there. So that's the, that's the master bedroom. And now we have the bathroom. The main issue here is that the geezer has been taken and stolen. Now a geezer is what is going to cost you like 15 grand to supply and install. But you see here, now this is really common, in, in the low income segment you've got these, these geezers that are inside the house, they're in the bathroom or they're in the kitchen. Yeah. Now if they are not a certain distance off the roof, like this one was not, is actually not compliant because it's way too close to the uh, top of the roof, you're not going to get sectional titling, you're not going to get finance. How far off does it have to be off the roof? I don't know off the top of my head, it's on one of my inspection reports, but it's like 30, 30 centimeters, something like that. But it like doesn't need to be boxed off? Because I've seen boxed some on the buildings it's boxed off. Best is actually to put it outside, then, it, then it's fine. If it's inside, it has to be boxed off and, and a certain distance off the roof. So yeah, here we'd have to take, rip out the bathtub, rip out this, put in the new, you're looking at 20 grand just to get, 30 grand just to get this, this bathroom back in shape. Would it not be better to, if you're ripping out the bathtub to install a shower instead? I would, yeah, I would. That's the nice thing, with these kind of buildings, we get to now decide how we want to make, uh, how we want to, you know, fix it up. The, Always a good idea there. to look for damp issues. Usually you can see it inside the cupboards, but this looks fine. So plumbing might be an issue, as you pointed out. You know, we can't see electricals, we can't see plumbing, so we have to assume the worst case scenario. So this is what a highly, highly distressed unit would look like. We're gonna go now to the other side of the building where the unit has been redone or done up. So we can see what, you know, after a bit of love and TLC, what a unit could look like. So we've had a look at the distressed side of the property. We're gonna now look at the, the side that's been renovated. And the key here is just to see what, you know, what we saw, what it could become. And sometimes when you're investing in a distressed building, you have to see the potential, not what you're seeing in front of you. So this is, this is the renovated building. Starting here on the right, we've got the bathroom. So a geezer, toilet, bathtub. You'll note that that geezer is not compliant. It's gonna to have to be lowered. Otherwise the building inspector is not going to make it compliant, which means we can't get a sectional title, which means can't get finance. No finance. No finance, 100%. No finance. Then we've got um, one bedroom here on the left. The issue here is, I mean, it's been done up nicely. It's renovated, it looks clean. There's no built-in covers. So we're going to, have to, we're going to have to provide that. Can I ask with, with uh, renovated buildings, how do you know that nothing's really been covered up like the bad like stuff? Like damp and... Yeah, and... Look, what, what we will usually do when we buy a property is get an inspector in and they've got a device, a damp device. Mm -hmm. So they'll go onto the wall and they'll have a damp reading. So you'll be able to okay. see past the, the cosmetic fixes, but plumbing, electricals, until you knock open the wall, you don't know what you're dealing with. And then we've got this lounge, which is nice. And again, same problem. Although this has been renovated, it's still not compliant because this is not safety glass. So even though this side of the building looks renovated, there's still 10, 15 How much would you have units. to budget for um, safety glass? Probably per unit, you're looking at about 15, 15 grand. Because these are big windows and it's on both sides. It's in that room and in the lounge. Okay. But other than that, I mean, this unit is pretty much specced up. So Kurisani, you picked up on something important here in the kitchen. What's the problem here? Uh, there's no space for a stove and a fridge because if you put in a stove here, which I would assume this is, this one will not open to where's the fridge going to go because it's going to block the door or you'd have to put in the lounge. So I would suggest that maybe a cut out of something be put here and then the space be left open but still don't have space for a fridge. 
But you see, this is where the owner's trying to create two or three bedrooms to get a higher rent, but he's now messed it up to a point where the kitchen's not functional anymore. And then the, here's the other master room where the built-in cupboard's already in. So I would budget maybe five grand for that other unit to get built-in cupboards, plus 15 grand for the windows. So you're already looking at a 20,000 rand budget per for unit for each unit. And there's nine units here. So that's now 180 grand. And then here we come to the room where- Is this a room or walk-in closet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be a room. Um, Kurisani, can you do me a favor? Can you stand there and then just put your arms wide and see if you can touch both sides? Oh my gosh. No, he's a tall fella, but I mean, that's crazy. First to first, I can still do it. First to first. We're looking at a, maybe a small single bed. What he has done, which is quite cool, is he's fixed up the electrical. So you can see here, this is, uh, you know, an updated DB board. It doesn't mean that the electricals are good. It means that he's cosmetically done the right stuff. But at least you can see what a unit could look like. So that's what a typical mentorship experience would look like. We go through each unit together. I give him some tips on where to look and what to look for. Um, you know, Kurosani's got some background in construction, so he's already quite, quite up to date with things. Um, we've got a bunch of viewings left for today. We're gonna go look at a few in Germiston, a few in Kempton Park and in Primrose. Um, anything that you learned today or took away from today? Anything that I learned is that from um, your mentorship is that he'll hold your hand through it. Like, even if you don't know anything, he'll hold your hand through it every step of the way. He'll point out things that you probably won't see. No matter how knowledgeable you are, be, always be willing to learn because he'll hold your hand and he'll teach you. So this is what a buying experience is like. If you want to know more about my mentorship program, click the link below.